The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There's a, there's a young man, his name is a Yisrael Lewish. He learned in the mirror many years after I did. When he was in the mirror, the Rosh Hashiva was Reb Nelson Tzvi Finkel. When I learned there, it was Reb Finkel. Reb Nelson Tzvi, we all know, was a very sick person. He had a very bad case of Parkinson's. And everything that he did was hard for him. He couldn't walk, he couldn't maneuver. And one day, Rabbi Sir Lewis says that he was going to Yeshiva. He slept in a dira a few blocks away from Yeshiva. And he's walking and it's snowing. Snowing in Yerushalayim is not an easy thing. The whole city stops. And he's snowing and he's walking to Yeshiva. And all of a sudden he sees Rabbi Nelson Tzvi Finkel walking to Yeshiva in the snow. Now, Reb Nelson Finkel had a very hard time walking to yeshiva on a level playing field, on a regular street. It was hard for him to walk and keep his balance and, and maneuver himself to yeshiva. And during the snow, it was a thousand times worse. So a bunch of Bachem are already now gathered and walking next to the Rosh Hashiva and helping him. And they asked Reb Nelson Tzvi, tell me, why are you mooching to come to yeshiva on a snow day? Why don't you just pick up the phone, call the office, call somebody, and in a minute you'll have 20, 30 bachram in your house. You'll dive in your house today. It's a much arrive for you to come to, 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 to come to yeshiva. And Rasul Tzvi said, unbelievable thing. He says, you know, I was also a kid. I was also a bacher. And I know that when there's snow, everybody's happy. Everybody's freilich. Maybe people going to work are not so happy. They have to go to work and they have to drive in the slush and the snow. It's painful. But the, for younger generation, the snow is a simcha a time. I can't miss a snow day. When it snows, I have to be in yeshiva. I have to see the looks on all the bachram. Everybody's walking around with a smile. It's snowing outside. They're playing with snowballs, they're making snow miniature, whatever it should be. Just standing in the snow, watching the snow. The Bachram are happy. The Bachram are happy, I have to watch that. I gotta see when the Bachram are to freedom. Happy Bachram makes me happy. And the, dos is ki'ilu yoldoi. It's not just that the Bachram have harusas, they're learning good. That's osoi. It's the level of Ki'ilu Yoldoi that they care about the Bachram, that he's happy when they're happy. That's Ki'ilu Yoldoi. My Rashiva Rebel Yeshve used to say over a story that he learned in Taravadas before he came to Lakewood. He learned in Taravadas. At that time, the Rashiva was a Goyin, a Godel that came from Europe already, a Godel. His name was Rabshleim Mahayman. Rabshleim Mahayman was never Zaycha to children of his own. And Rabbi Shleim Haiman had many, many children. He had a Talmidim, he had a yeshiva in Europe, but then he had a yeshiva in Tervedas, he was the yeshiva of Tervedas. And he stelled avek moyudik talmidim chachamim. Many of them came to Lake with, with the Baron's best Talmidim. One day, famous story, one day, it snowed, but it didn't snow like it snows in Yerushalayim. It snowed in New York City like it snows in Buffalo. It was a few feet tall. It was so high that there was no public transportation in New York. Not the trains, not the buses, not even taxis. Nothing was going. New York City grounded to a halt. And most of the Bachram didn't live next to the yeshiva. They came by bus. They came from... Brooklyn, they came from Borough Park or Flappish to Williamsburg. The yeshiva was then in Williamsburg. And they had to schlep, and they couldn't go. There was no buses, there was no trains. So Rav Shleim Mahayman lived a few blocks from yeshiva, and he mutched, and he came to the yeshiva. When he came to the yeshiva, he saw that there was four bachram that showed up in yeshiva that day. There were four bachram. They asked him, the yeshiva is going to say shir. He says, I've had the regular time. He comes into shear and he starts giving the shear. And he wasn't talking into his beard. He was bellowing and screaming and giving over the shear like if there was 500 people. Like he was standing on Hasinai giving the shear. 
It was Beresus of Isaiah. It was Mamish, it was Koilus of Brachim. After the shear, one of the Bachram went over to him and said, Shiva, I'm sure you noticed there was only four of us. We were standing right around the Rosh Shiva. We were sitting, Mamish, Arum Garingal, the Rosh Shiva. We could hear you whisper, but yet you gave the shear like if you were speaking in, 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 in an arena. So Rabbi Shleimah Hyman said, You think I'm giving shear to four Bachram? Four Talmidim? I'm giving shear to four Talmidim, but I'm giving shear to your Talmidim and your Talmidim's Talmidim. All the way, keep on going down. The Messiah is going down from one link to the next link. That's what Kalal is all about. And when a Rebbe gives a shear, and he's not just talking to four bodies, he's talking to the future, to these Bachram that are going to eventually become Rosh Hashivas, that are eventually going to give over the Messiah Satira to the next generation. It's a whole different story. And that only happens when the Rebbe is not there to just do his job. Because the Rebbe is just there to do his job and say, four guys? Forget it. It's a snow day. We're calling it off. It's a day off. Guys, do whatever you want. I'll see you later. But when the Rebbe cares about the Brachim, when it's Ki'ilu Yoldoi, and he's giving it over with the Gansa Ganskite, that's a Rebbe that's going to have a connection with the Bachram even after they leave the Shir. Forever and ever the Bachram have that vision of their Rebbe in their head. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.